Hey guys, the Explorer 4 here. Welcome back to some more reviews and welcome to my review on the 1971 horror film Let's Scare Jessica to Death. And it gets 6.4 on IMDb and directed by John D. Hancock. And there's no way that that's a real name. There's no way. It sounds like a fake name, but John C. Hancock. <laughs> I guess he's made movies after this. I don't know any of them, but. Yeah, he's made movies. He's still making movies. Wow. Yeah. He's still active. He's still doing movies. Um, but yeah, today's movie is Let's Scare Jessica to Death. And I went into this movie completely blind, y'all. I knew nothing about this movie other than I love the title. Let's Scare Jessica to Death. That's a cool title for a movie. Lame poster. Lame. I will be using the poster that was used on Paramount Plus. Don't believe me? Look at look, just look up the poster for Let's Scare Jessica. The original poster. I mean, I want to get this tagline real quick. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm probably gonna use it too in the description. I always put the taglines down there. Something is after Jessica. Something very cold, very wet, and very dead. Oh, terrible. And the poster. It's god awful. It's like one of the worst seventies horror posters in my opinion. But all that aside, let's get into this one, guys. Cause like I said, this one I didn't know anything about. Went into this movie completely blind, and my god, it blew me away. And what's cool, I want to mention this while I'm reading this as I'm looking at this right now I actually got this confirmed um, the lead chick in this movie Zora Lampert who is the lead character Jessica in this she was also in the man from uncle and Kojak but she was in the exorcist 3 and I did remember her in that movie she's Kenderman's wife she sounded like she was dubbed in that movie, and I don't know why, because in this movie, she's perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with her voice. In that movie, she sounded dubbed. Maybe she wasn't, but I'm pretty sure she was, because rewatch Exorcist 3, it's kind of clear that she's dubbed. But I said, I don't know why she's dubbed. I mean, she's perfect in this movie, perfectly fine. And Jessica is this person that's recovering from being a mental institution for a while, for a while, but she recently got uh, out of there, and she's now with her friends, sort of driving around doing random stuff. They've just moved into this really old, not abandoned house, but this real ancient kind of house, small town, middle of nowhere. It's her her boyfriend, and I guess their friend. And they're all doing this thing that I've never seen before in another movie where Jessica will spot a cemetery and be like, oh, stop there. And she'll run up and take a piece of paper and draw, I guess, not really sketch, but you know how sometimes you can do that art where you put a piece of paper over something, you just trace it, and it causes an imprint on the paper, and you just use that. Sort of what she does, she just kind of, I don't even think she draws, she just uses her hand and I guess it's like soot or something, like dust, and it imprints this the headstone on the paper. And I thought that was pretty interesting. That was definitely different. And they go to this house, this town is very much suspicious and weird, kind of off. And they meet this girl while they move into this house who was pretty much crashing there. Just stayed there for, I guess, not to be homeless. And they become friends with her and they let her move in. And before you know it, some weird stuff starts happening. And you start wondering, is it all in Jessica's head? Is there really some supernatural stuff going on here? You're constantly wondering in your head what's going on. In the movie, I love how it doesn't serve everything on a silver platter. It doesn't give you all the answers. This is one of those movies where you got to kind of figure it out on your own. And I like that. I like how you can go back and rewatch it and piece together little things like, oh, that picture over there and this little thing that she was reading right here. You can get bits and pieces of the story as you're going along the film. And as long as you're paying at least relatively close attention, you'll start figuring out what the story is really uh, 
doing. But I love this movie. I actually love this movie so much. I'll spoil it right here. Why not? I gave this movie a 5 out of 5. I don't do that very often. I mean, I, it's not like I'm completely against it. I mean, definitely my standards are lowered compared to other people where, to me, a 5 out of 5 movie is Smile from 2022. Some people look at that and groan, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was everything I wanted it to be. Same thing here. This movie's perfect. It's everything I want it to be. It was the right movie at the right time. And it has a unique enough story and a good cast and really creepy moments. And I think this is a TV movie because it's rated G. Is that, what does that say? GP. What does GP mean? General public? <laughs> but I think this is a TV movie and it's rated G. Which I really don't think it should be rated G. I think it should be PG at least. But GP, I've never seen that. It must be general public. I don't know. That's weird. But yeah, there's not a, like gore and nudity and violence and all that being relied on with this film. This movie creeps me out with its atmosphere, creeps me out with its direction, creeps me out with... The sound effects and the idea of it constantly playing mind games with you. That you're constantly wondering, is Jessica losing her mind? Is she crazy? Is she gonna is it gonna be the uninvited where at the end of the movie the lead was crazy all along? But uh I like that. I think that's so cool. I dig how it kind of goes into more of a supernatural route as the movie goes and the storyline just gets bigger and bigger. And I thought the locations, man, I love 70s movies so much for their locations. I do. I don't think movies nowadays do locations justice. Because they shot this out in a beautiful countryside. Lots of usage of, I'm assuming, real cemeteries and forests and parks and lakes and creeks and waterfalls. It's beautiful movie I, I gotta look and see if this movie's like on blu-ray or 4k or anything it's such a spectacular looking movie it's shot very 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 well and for 1971 i mean you know they do a lot of cool things in this movie you start realizing that people around the town are i guess in a way possessed or under control from the spirit that's in this house and they all have these like marks all over them to where that's how Jessica can tell that they're under control. And I like the twist of the movie, how the girl that they let in and, you know, the basically the, the their brand new friend is the villain, is the spirit that's been possessing people and playing mind games with Jessica. And she sort of does the kiss of death to people. Where she'll kiss people on their neck, and I guess that it doesn't really kill them; it just kind of makes them uh, work for. Her. Which I I will say, I guess that's like the one obvious thing is like the chick. I knew she was the villain as soon as I seen her. It's like, oh, I just so happened to be here in this house, and um, I was just looking for a place to crash, and oh, I met you guys, and oh, well, I'm gonna try and sweet talk my way to being y'all's friends. I knew from the second I saw her she was the villain, so that wasn't a very big twist. So I, I didn't really know where they were going to take it. Though. I was like, I was like, is she a vampire? Is she a ghost? Is she a demon? I wasn't sure where they were going to take it. But um, yeah, so that I, I instantly knew what that what what the villain was going to be. Um, and uh, I just think this got good suspenseful moments, real uncomfortable moments, and. I love how these characters are down to earth in this movie. I love when movies do this because most films, you got the guys are all perverts. They're all just cussing, cursing, you know, pigs and slime balls. And they're loud and obnoxious. And then the women are just really horny and, you know, everybody's smoking pot and drinking beer. I like how movies actually portray people realistically, though, like when it does it like this, 
where they're just talking. They're having dinner and, hey, how's your day going? And people are working around the house and they're trying to have stuff to sell, move stuff around and sell stuff. And they're just going by their days. And I think that's pretty cool. It's like you don't have to make every movie where everybody's like, yeah, party, woo, and everybody's unlikable. I like how this is like, no, like, just normal people. And that's that's cool. I like that. It's different. Uh, the supernatural aspect, I think, adds a lot of creepiness as well. The soundtrack is great. Wonderful soundtrack. Great usage of sound effects. Which... I'll keep uh, saying this over and over again. I think it's a lost art. I think we've really lost, in today's horror films in particular, people utilizing sound to creep you out. It's just not done anymore. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's not much more I can add to it. It's a very simple movie. It's very straightforward and to the point and just not boring. And It's an hour and 29 minutes, very, very short. It's acted very, very well. I think the lead chick, Zara Lampert, I think she's a great actress and she's beautiful. I mean, she's absolutely beautiful and she's a wonderful actress, such a warm character, Jessica. And you you really do feel bad for her because she struggles a lot with her mind in this movie. And you hear a lot of her inner thoughts and her overthinking things. Oh, he doesn't like me anymore. He likes her. And am I sounding crazy again? Am I going to have to go back to the hospital? You hear her thoughts, the anxieties in her head. And yeah, I've seen it done before, but it still, it's still, it's done well. And that's the, that's the important thing is that it's, it's, it's pulled off very, very well. And it works. So yeah, I think everything about this movie is nailed. I give it a 5 out of 5. I think it's one of the best horror films from the 70s. One of my new favorites and easily a movie I'd get on 4K one day. And it's free on Tubi? I think that's... Oh, no, no. it's. I don't think it's on Tubi. It's on Paramount. That's how I watched it. It's on Paramount. I think it just got put on Paramount. And the poster on there is way better. Cool poster for Paramount. Bad poster for the 70s. But yeah, it's a cool title for the movie. I dig the title. I like... The idea of it, I like the locations and cinematography and the acting, the direction. All around a solid movie. So yeah, 5 out of 5 for me. Uh, If you guys have seen this movie, comment down below your guys' thoughts on this film. If you guys want to follow me on social media, my Instagram, my letterbox, my Twitter will be linked in the description box below. But anyways, y'all, that's going to do it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, get ready for the October Wes Craven Marathon. I'm going to be reviewing all of the Wes Craven films from Last House on the Left all the way till Scream 4. So, um, yeah, that's going to be uploading all throughout October. So, yeah, get ready for that. I've been working real hard on getting those reviews done, filmed, movies watched and everything. So, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun doing that. So, Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. And I appreciate all your guys' support and you guys checking these videos out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Explorer 4 is out. And uh, y'all have a good night. Take care. Peace.